Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for intermediate algebra. This is section 8.1, which is the algebra of functions. Sometimes when we're working with functions, we might have to uh, do some mathematical operations to them. We might have to add them, subtract them, multiply them, or divide them. And now we're working with functions, so they're entire quantities. So what we should be familiar with is function notation. And now we're going to look at a different way to represent that function notation when we do operations in math with them. Now, if we want to add the function f of x plus g of x, we can rewrite it as f plus g of x. Both of these functions have the input value of x. And that's a requirement in order to be able to add or subtract functions. They have to have the same input value. Here we have f of x minus g of x. We can rewrite that as f minus g of x. So it's similar notation. If this was just one function, it would be f of x or g of x. Well, here we have f minus g of x. If we want to multiply two functions, f of x times g of x, we can rewrite it as f times g of x. And same thing with division. If we have f of x divided by g of x, we can rewrite it as the functions f divided by g of x. Now, one thing we always have to be aware of is domain restrictions. We never want to divide by 0. So if we have two functions and we're going to divide by one of them, the function in the denominator can never equal 0, because we cannot divide by 0. That would be undefined. So when we have this, our functions may have restrictions. But if we do division with those functions, we may find additional restrictions of that function. So let's look at some examples. <clears throat> let's let f of x equal x minus 3 and g of x equal 2x plus 4. So we have two different functions, f of x and g of x. And we want to add the functions, f plus g of x. Well, to do that, I take the function f of x. This is f of x. And I want to add the function g of x, which is 2x plus 4. And I use parentheses just when I do this substitution to not make any sign errors. So if we look at this, x minus 3 plus 2x plus 4, well, to add the functions, essentially all I really have to do is combine like terms. We have x plus 2x, which would give me 3x. We have a negative 3 plus a positive 4. Negative 3 plus 4 is going to give me a positive 1. So if I add these two functions together, I get a new function that would be 3x plus 1. So if I wanted to evaluate this, uh, the sum of these functions for some value, I wouldn't have to plug it into one function and then plug it into another function and then add those quantities. I can just plug it into this one function here to find the sum of the two functions evaluated at some particular value for x. Let's look at f minus g of x. If I want to find f minus g of x, I take the function f and I subtract g of x. And again, I put in parentheses because now that it's subtraction, these parentheses are essential because I'm subtracting the entire function. So I have to distribute this negative to each one of the terms of that function. So now, if I want to combine these or find their difference, x minus 2x's would give me a negative x. Negative 3 minus a positive 4, because I have to distribute it to each term. Negative 3 minus a positive 4 is negative 3 minus 4, which is negative 7. Make sure you don't make a sign error when it's subtraction. So now we have this new value of negative x minus 7. If I wanted to find what the difference of two functions was, I could just plug in a particular value and find the difference of those two functions. Here we have f times g of x. And f times g of x is essentially multiplying f times g. And since the function f is x minus 3 and the function of g is 2x plus 4, to multiply those together, we notice we have two binomials. We can use FOIL here. So I'm going to FOIL this out. 
I'm going to get 2x squared minus 6x plus 4x would be negative 2x. And negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. So we see I used FOIL. I combined the two middle terms. So I did skip that step there. But hopefully at this point, we're very familiar with using FOIL. So I have this new value of 2x squared minus 2x minus 12. So if I wanted to evaluate the product of a function at any particular value of x, I would only have to plug it into this one function instead of two separate functions and then have to multiply it. Here we have f divided by g of x. And if we recall, this is one that may introduce more domain restrictions. So let's just take a moment and look at what are our current domains. x minus 3, well, that's a linear equation. It has no domain restru restrictions because we're not taking any square roots, so we don't have to worry about negative values. And we're not dividing by any value of x, so we don't have to worry about 0. There are no domain restrictions. Well, g of x is also a linear function, so we have no domain restrictions. At this point, there are no domain restrictions. But since we're going to do division, I'm going to take the function f of x and divide it by the function g of x. Now there's a domain restriction, because there is an x in the denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that domain restriction. This value cannot equal 0. So I'm going to take it and set it equal to 0 and find the value of x that would make it undefined. So I'd subtract 4 and divide by 2. So we find x would be negative 2. Negative 4 divided by 2. x equals negative 2. This is our domain restriction. So I can say this. Uh, quotient of these two functions can have any value of x as long as x is not negative 2. So this is my domain restriction. You might be asked to write it in interval notation. So that would be from negative infinity to negative 2. We cannot include negative 2. And we can have from negative 2 to positive infinity. The only value that's restricted is the value negative 2. It's not included. So this would be in interval notation. All right, what if we were asked to find the sum of these two functions at the x value of 2? Well, I could take this value and put it into f. And I could take this value and put it into g and then add them together. But most of that work is already done for me. Instead of having to plug in that value into two separate functions, well, if we think about this, f plus g, we've already done that, f plus g of x is this value right here. So all I have to do is plug in that value into this function. And that's why doing the algebra on the functions themselves can save us time in the future when we have to uh, evaluate the sum of functions or the difference or the product or the quotient of functions for any particular value of, of x. So I'm just going to go to this and say, well, I'm going to plug in 2. So it would be 3 times 2 plus 1. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. Simple enough. So we can evaluate functions uh, for any particular value of x. If we had to add them, subtract them, multiply, or divide them, we just do the uh, math of the function, or the algebra of the function, and then evaluate it for one uh, value of x. All right, let's look at this, because an important concept that we've already touched on is domain. Now, if we have two functions, f of x equals 2x minus 8, and g of x equals the square root of 2 minus x, we want to find the domain of each of these values if we were to do algebra on them. So the first thing we need to do is determine what's the domain of the current functions we have. Well, f of x is a linear function. There are no domain restrictions. g of x is not linear. It has a square root. And we know that when it comes to square roots, we can't take the square root of a negative in the real number system. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this value and say, well, 2x, 2 minus x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Because we can't take the square root of a negative value to find uh, a real output value. 
So here, to solve this, I'm just going to add x to both sides. And I get 2 is greater than or equal to x, which is the same thing as saying x is less than or equal to 2. I just flipped it around, changed its order. So x is less than or equal to 2. This is the domain restriction of g of x. So g of x has to have values of x less than or equal to 2. This is its domain. And if I write that in interval notation, negative infinity to 2, it can include the value of 2. So that's interval notation. That's the domain of g of x. All right, so if we want to find f plus g of x, let's go ahead and do that and then determine its domain. If I have f, which is 2x minus 8, plus g of x, which is 2 minus x, if I look at this, there are no like terms because this is under the radical. And this is 2x, and that's negative 8. There are no like terms. That's as far as I can go. Now, when we add functions together, we have to look at their domain again. Well, the domain is just the intersection of the two domains of the function. This was all real, and this was negative, eight, or negative infinity to 2. Well, this is the intersection of those two functions. So its domain is that of g of x from negative infinity to 2. Why is that? Well, because this is the only piece that contains a domain restriction, and it is part of this function. So its domain is the same as g of x. And we'll see something very similar here. If I have f minus g of x, I can find that subtraction, f minus g. And we see, well, I can't, again, I can't simplify. I can't combine any like terms. So its domain doesn't change. But we still had to find the domain of the original functions because now that we have this new function, we've done algebra to it, it has to have this domain. f times g. Well, if I take 2x minus 8 for f, and g is the square root of 2 minus x, well, if I simplify this, it's essentially just distribution. right? This is one term, the square root of 2 minus x. I distribute it to each term. So I get 2x square root of 2 minus x minus 8 times the square root of 2 minus x. Now, if we look at this, or this should be an x. If we look at this here, this is our only domain restriction. We still have an x under a radical. Well, what, what is the domain restriction of this piece? It's the same as the domain restriction of this piece, which is our original domain for g of x, negative infinity to 2. So if we notice, when we add functions or subtract functions or multiply functions, the domain of their intersections does not change. It was the same every time. But now we're going to divide. And we're going to see something uh, happen here where we gain an additional domain restriction. I'm going to divide f, which is 2x minus 8, by g, which is the square root of 2 minus x. Now, when we found this domain, the value under the radical could equal 0. The square root of 0 is 0, which is a real number. But now it's in the denominator. So this value, what's under that radical, has to be greater than 0. It cannot equal 0, because that makes it undefined. So if we find this domain, I have to add x to both sides. I get 2 is greater than x. And if I flip that around, that just means x is less than 2. If I write that in interval notation, it does not include the value of 2, because that makes it 0. Notice our domain has changed. We lost a value. We had to restrict the value of 2. And so that is our new domain. So our domain here is from negative infinity up to 2, but not including it. So we have to be careful with that one. Determine the domain of the initial functions. And when you do this division, find any additional domain restrictions. All right, let's look at this. Sometimes we'll be asked to uh, find values of sums or differences or products or quotients of two separate functions. 
but we're not uh, actually given those values. So it says if f of x is x squared, which is a parabola, and g of x equals 2, which is a constant function, find three ordered pairs that satisfy the sum of the two functions. So let's find the sum of the two functions first. I'm going to take f plus g of x. And if I do that, the first thing, maybe I want to determine any domain restrictions. Well, this parabola has no domain restrictions. I can square any value of x. And g of x, well, there is no x value. That's going to change the fact that it is equal to 2. So there's no domain restrictions for either of those functions. So let's go ahead and add these two functions. f of x is x squared, and g of x is 2. So I'm just going to add those two functions. So now I have this new function. And if I have to find three ordered pairs that satisfy this sum, I'm ready to do that. All I have to do is plug in some values. And because it didn't specify what ordered pairs I need or what values I'm going to use, I can choose any values. So I'm going to choose some x values. I'm going to choose negative 1. I'm going to choose 0. And I'm going to choose positive 1. I like to have a negative value and a positive value and maybe a value of 0. So I can maybe at a later point determine the behavior of this uh, uh, sum of functions. All right, so I'm going to plug in this value. Negative 1 squared is 1 plus 2 is 3. Negative 1, 3 is an ordered pair that satisfies the sum of these two functions. If I plug in 0 into this sum of functions, 0 squared is 0. 0 plus 2 is 2. This ordered pair satisfies the sum of those two functions. And the last one I'm going to choose is 1. 1 squared is 1 plus 2 is 3. So we see we get 1 plus 3, or excuse me, 1 and 3 as my ordered pair. All three of these satisfy that function. Now what I'd like you to do is to choose three different values of x, and find your own three ordered pairs that satisfy the sum of this function, because f plus g of x is equal to x squared plus 2. We did that sum of the two functions. All right, let's look at another example. What if uh, we're asked to find the sum or difference of a function at a particular value of x? But we're not given those functions. We're actually given the graph of those functions. So if we look at this graph, this linear function here is our g of x. And this parabola we see is f of x. So we know that information. So if I want to find f minus g of 0, well, this is the input value. It's what uh, x is. Well, where is the values for x of 0? Well, if we go to the y-axis, that's where x is 0, I see this point here where g of x crosses is 0, negative 1. The y value is negative 1. If I look at the function f of x for x equals 0, I get this value right here, which is when x is 0, y is negative 4. Now I'm ready to find the difference of f minus g of 0, because I found the values when x is 0. So what is the difference between f, that was this value right here, minus g, which is this value right here. And notice I use those parentheses, because I don't want to make a sign error, negative 4 minus negative 1. f of 0 minus g of 0. Negative 4 minus a negative 1 is a negative 3. So what we found is f minus g of 0 equals negative 3. So that's how you can do that. If you were asked to find any other value, if you say, well, what about uh, at x equals 1? Well, g of x would be 0. And f of x, well, maybe it's. 3 and a, negative 3 and a half, and then you could find their sum or difference, or you could multiply them or divide them from their graph. So this has been section 8.1, Algebra of Functions. Keep practicing, and thank you for watching.